What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking all about how to plan your mat and reformer Pilates classes. This video is going to be pretty specific to people that are going through a Pilates teacher training or new Pilates instructors. So if you're not one of those people, it's okay. You can still watch this video and learn a lot, but you can always click off of this video if it's not for you. It's okay. If we've not met before, I'm Margaret, I'm 26. I'm a certified Pilates instructor. I've been teaching for three going on four years, both mat and reformer. So I have a lot of experience. I went through my comprehensive 500 hour training about this time last year. Um, I'm gonna talk to you guys a about a couple of different ways that I like to plan my classes. And then I'll walk you guys through two examples of a mat class of mine and a reformer class of mine. I do wanna start off by saying there is no right or wrong way to form Mat and to plan a Pilates class. It takes a lot of trial and error to figure out what kind of formatting is going to work for you, what resonates most with you and with your clients. So just be ready to trial and error a lot of stuff. Typically in any class that I teach, and I would say for any class in general, you'll want to have the spine moving in all directions, extension, flexion, rotation, and lateral flexion. If you can get all of those things in, you'll have a pretty well-rounded class. You also wanna be moving the body in all planes of motion. So having things moving, <laughs> why can't I think of the planes of motion? <laughs> having things moving front to back, from side to side, up and down. So you wanna move the body in as many ways as you can. If you've taken a mat class with me before, either live or on YouTube, you kind of know I follow a similar format for just about every class. I start in a warm up. It's usually about five minutes. I do the meat and potatoes of the class and then I end with a cool down. And usually that's about five minutes, it's like 15 minutes before class. Usually I don't leave it too uh, well. Sometimes I plan a little bit further ahead. Sometimes I just wing it. I would never suggest that you wing a class. Just <laughs> write things down. It will be your friend. I have a kind of idea of things I wanna do. Typically when I'm planning a class, it's Friday. so. I look at the week and things that I've taught in the week and I try to get a little bit of variety in with each class. Today, I've got the luxury of using props, got the small ball, got light weights. I already kind of know in my head, like this week we didn't do any like four point kneeling work. So I kind of want to do that with the ball. I typically think of my stuff in segments. So I always want to have a core series. I always want to do something that's going to work the lower body and then some back extension. And then for this class, a little bit of standing. So that's kind of where I start my planning process for mat classes. Um, and I have a couple different formats of mat classes that have come to be as I've continued to um, teach virtually. The biggest tip that I have for you when you're observing classes, write down another teacher's flows, write down what they are teaching because that will show you, it will give you a good example of how to structure things. And you can always take anything that I teach and teach it in your classes. I'll never know. Don't feel like you're copying me. It's I am putting it out there for you to use. <laughs> and sometimes I'm a little bit more detailed with what I do. Other times I'm just like, okay, supine abs, four point kneeling, standing. And then I just kind of see how things feel when we get into it. Um, other times if I'm feeling really like in a creative rut, I'll be like, okay, let's do like a tiny circles theme or like a triangle, like, you know, making shapes or doing like repeating certain exercise patterns, like a figure four. So when you're observing, look for those patterns. It will make a lot of sense once you get into it, I promise. Okay, so with this class, we're starting in the warm up. If you've taken my classes before, you know I always start with a little bit of breathing, big inhales through the nose. And then for warm ups, it kind of depends, depending on the class that I'm teaching, if we're doing a lot of arm stuff or we're doing tabletop stuff, you'll want to warm up um, the shoulders. And then usually that's where I do my side bending right there. Um, this class is starting in a supine ab series. So we've got the ball underneath the hips, and it looks like we're doing one, two, three probably about four exercises right here. What's important as you get into series like this is that as you're teaching it, like if you're using a ball or a prop, you can give people that don't have that prop a different option. Um, then I've got a transitional movement. Transition movements are very important. Write down a list of good transition movements. Roll-ups are always a really good one when you're teaching a mat class. And then this is where we get into what I would call like the heat building flow of the class. This is the big flow. So we've got four point kneeling all across the board, rolling the ball out, moving through the leg. And then this series, what I ended up doing is like kind of a repeating pattern. So we did a lift and lower with the bent knee and then a fire hydrant out. And then we repeated it again with the forearm down. 
So that's fun to do. And then again, another transition, I like to use um, back extension as a transition, especially for between side to side. And then we repeat the same exact thing on the second side. Um, working unilaterally like this is really nice because it takes up a lot of time in your class. Um, but also it's really nice for people to work single side because then they can notice those differences between their body from side to side. Um, you know, it just helps people become more body aware for sure. Okay, here's another transition up to stand. So standing roll down, right? Plank to stand. And then for this class, we've got a standing series. So I'm doing standing arms, but still with a little bit of legs. And we did about three, maybe four exercises. It was kind of a repeating pattern. Um, and then to finish up, this is what I would call like my grand finale series. Gets the heart rate up a little bit, definitely a challenge. And then we get into cool down. And for cool down, depending on what we do, usually, right, I'll do, um, I like to do a figure four stretch. I like to do lateral flexion in a cool down, um, forward folding, deep squats. Those all feel really nice. Um, but yeah, for, for cool down and warm up, just feel it out in your body and see how it feels for you. Planning out a reformer class usually looks a little bit different than it does on the mat. With reformer, I come from a background of teaching at a studio that had a very specific way of teaching, a very structured way of teaching. They split things into core, upper body, lower body, cool down, and it always followed that order. And then going into my comprehensive, all of the structure was taken out and I was able to do whatever I wanted. And that was very overwhelming. So I understand kind of the, the nerves around creating a class and, and not really knowing what to do. I still feel that with reformer classes. Kind of how I like to segment reformer classes. Again, I start up with some kind of a warm up. Up, whether that's footwork, whether it's roll up, roll back, any kind of like spinal articulation, I like to do right up at the top. Right up out of the warm up, I'll do some core work, whether that's supine abs, whether it's plank work, whether it's any other kind of core exercises. And then I typically like to have an upper and lower body section. They kind of like intermingle with each other. Um, and I'm not like super rigid with how I structure things. But I mean, always it's going to be a full body class. And I, I think I mean, like right now I'm teaching reformer classes on YouTube, so it's a little bit different than probably how you would teach in studio, but typically how I, how I get ideas for things is I go on Instagram. I follow a lot of people on Instagram that post very creative reformer classes, but right now with the reformer classes I'm doing, I also have to think about how I'm going to take this reformer class to the mat. I don't want it to be like an overly complicated routine for these specific classes. Usually what I have to do for this is, is just kind of play around a little bit on the reformer. If I can hammer down one series, usually then I'll build off the re I'll build the rest of the class off of that. Other ways that you can structure things though, I know we talked about this with the mat stuff, right? You can find a theme, right? So everything you do, maybe you do a tiny circle. <laughs> People hate that, but it's it's kind of fun. You can also do, you know, maybe you teach a class on all one yellow spring or you teach a no spring class. You teach you know, on, on one spring setting. That way too, the class moves a little bit better. There's a lot less stopping and starting. So for this reformer class, we started in a quadruped position, starting off in a cat cow. And I would even say the warm up portion of this extends into even more than what I am labeling as the warm up in here. Uh, then we start to press out with the carriage, right? So I'm gonna be layering on movements press out and then we add on with the leg. So again, another layering thing. Layering is a really fun thing to do because you can progress movements and people can stay where they feel comfortable. Next, we get into the core series, which is a little bit of spinal articulation, right? We're doing a roll down, holding on to the rope and then we add on to that. So this class kind of plays a lot on layering and you can, you'll see it as we continue to move through it, right? So we're pulling the arm, we're adding on with the lift of the leg. Now we pull the arm and lift the leg and then we're going to kick the leg up pull the arm, right? So again, layering. Also, it makes it fun. Okay, here's, this is kind of a transitional core movement that I'm using to get us towards the front of the machine. Ouch, pulses. <laughs> and then we have a spring change and we go into what I would say is a heat building, like start to the standing series. Uh, the standing series is what I would say is a pretty big portion of this class. This class, how I formatted it, is pretty much half of the class you're doing one side, half the class you're doing the other. So again, single side takes up a lot of time. Um, this lunge series is building off of itself. We started in a lunge, we added on a scooter, and then we added on the arms. So three layers there already. Then we just did the scooter and the arms, 
and then we move into a curtsy lunge. So I follow that same kind of pattern with the curtsy lunge. We add on with a curtsy lunge scooter. There it is. Stand all the way up. You see how layering is fun. So like if somebody doesn't want to add on the scooter, they can just stay in the curtsy lunge. Then we add it on with the arms. So we're doing a lift of the arms to lower, pulling in and then standing all the way up. And then we kick everything else out, just do the curtsy lunge scooter. Then to transition, because here we have a lot of things to think about. We have to move the box, we have to change the springs. So doing stuff prone, like swimming, uh, back extension is a really nice thing to do to get the box from one side to the other with the carriage. Props add in definitely another element of things to think about when you're planning a class. And especially on the reformer, you wanna make things as simple as possible uh, for people. And then we would just repeat the whole thing on the second side. Um, so again, just like we talked about in the mat class, we saw the same exact thing. It's nice to do things side to side because it'll feel different for people from side to side. And you know, if you are a Pilates instructor or if you've gone through training, if you are a Pilates student, you know, things feel different from side to side. And noticing those differences is what is going to help us and help our clients in the long run to become more body aware and feel more comfortable in our classes. Um, and you can see a little bit better what's going on because I have the rope on the inside. So you can see the pull, you can see the press, you can really, you can see a lot more here, which is super nice. And then we go back into again, building heat, going back into the standing flow. So again, like what I was talking about with layering, it's really, nice, especially when you have a mix of clients in your class, varying from beginners to more intermediate people. When you're able to layer exercises, you're giving people options so that they can meet themselves where they are at. And you'll notice that as you continue to observe classes, and if even if you start to watch my classes, you'll notice the layering. I usually call it like a combination exercise, but it's like <laughs> it's layering and you'll see that in the worksheet if you um, check that out down below. It will really help. Now, usually in a reformer class, I I am, I would say I'm relatively good with timing just because how I how I was taught to teach. Um, but usually I get I have about five minutes at the end, and when I have just five minutes, I'll do a core series. So this one it's about what, three exercises at the end, we wrap up on 100, which is really rude, and then you have to transition the box off of the carriage, you go right into cool down. So all in all, we had one, two, three, three spring changes on one side and then three on the other, and then we got into cool down. So it wasn't anything too complicated, but now you can kind of see how it was pieced together. Got some other questions that I wanted to answer while we were still on this video. One really good and wonderful question that I got was when you are a new instructor, how do you get comfortable teaching? The biggest thing I can say with that is that you have to continue to practice. Even when your practice hours are over, when you fulfill that part of your teacher training, continue to practice. Practice things on yourself before you teach them to clients. Practice things on other people before you bring it into a group class. Practice, practice, practice. Another question that I got was how I dealt with teaching so much with my RA. I will say right out, right out of the gate, I have a very high pain tolerance. So there are not many days that I feel like I can't do something because of my RA and I'm very fortunate in that way. You know, when you start teaching, you're adding something into your life and it can be a little bit overwhelming. So I think giving yourself enough time to rest after your teaching, giving yourself like a full weekend off is really nice. You know, sometimes you are just in that period of grind for a little bit before you do get a break, but take any opportunity to break that you need to. You do kind of have to know your limits when you're going into a teaching setting or when you're adding in like a, a part-time job in addition to something else, you gotta learn your limits and you'll know pretty quickly what is too much. Like for me, it was too much to teach 25 classes in a week and teach seven virtual classes and film YouTube videos. That was a little bit too much, but I did it for a little bit, but it just took me some time because I felt, I felt so inflamed. I was having like a horrible flare while I was doing that. Like, huh, maybe I need to cut back a little bit. Unfortunately, it is a little bit of trial and error and there is not one thing that I can say is like, is going to be helpful for everybody. It's, you really just have to rest 
when you can. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, as always, please let me know. If you have any other questions about planning classes or if there are other videos that you want to see around being a Pilates instructor, if you're a new instructor or going through teacher training, please let me know those down in the comments. Remember, you guys are awesome. You can do anything you put your mind to and I'll see you in our next video. I just can't resist, go. You got me drunk in love, drunk in